Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to talk about why publish when young. And essentially this is something which you often see if you have been in scholarship and science for a sufficiently long time that people who start out their PhD career when they are young, people who publish their first paper when they are relatively young tend to get a head start in science. And this is often the case that these people end up with higher H index, higher number of citations and they are more likely to get prizes and so on. So again, while this fact may be troubling to some people who are older, I'm going to address this issue and at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about what you can do if you are somebody who started the PhD later in life and who is an older PhD student, how can you catch up with the young Turks? So let's look at this fact and this has been actually codified in science as something known as the Matthew effect. And Matthew is essentially somebody from the Bible. So there is a saying that he who has much shall receive more and he who has little shall have whatever he has taken from him. So again, this is a pretty harsh sounding statement, but it tells you that something which often happens in nature is being duplicated in science also. So this biblical aphorism is something which is very clear in many fields. So certainly we see this in scientific domains is that people who publish more, who have more citations, who have higher H index, get to work in better labs and universities and these people end up accruing even more number of citations, papers, graduate students, funding and prizes as the case may be. So essentially the message from this is that if you are a graduate student or a student at this time and you are somebody who is planning to do research, then you should try to finish your bachelor's, master's and PhD degree as soon as possible. So essentially this is probably in the 20s is the best time to finish your PhD. So if you are somebody who can finish his PhD by 25, that's great because you get a head start in this process. If you are doing a postdoc, you are still young. If you are an assistant professor or a research scientist, you are still young and so on. Now, remember that as far as science is concerned, age is the scientific age. And if you look at some of the publication by the Humboldt Foundation, they define scientific age as the age after you have done your PhD. So essentially that's when your time starts as far as research is concerned. That's when you publish papers and you get the fact that you are publishing papers as an independent researcher. So what happens with this case is that with time your citations grow. Now if you are somebody who has published a paper, you know that in the first year you get a very few citations then slowly these citations start to accrue. And as you publish more and more papers, you get known in the field. So what happens is your citation goes up and as your citation goes up, your H index goes up. So this is a process which cannot be speeded up. So it's not like something like a pressure cooker that you can essentially work very hard for a few years and then catch up on this process because again, this takes time. Though if you do publish a few more papers every year, it's going to help your case to some extent. So essentially what this is saying is that research is more like a crock pot or like making a stew or a soup that this will take a lot of time to show its impact. So we can see that in the fact that people who get Nobel prizes are typically very old. They may be more than 60, 70, 80 sometimes. So that's something to keep in mind. And in fact, I know of cases, especially in chemistry, physics and some of these discipline where the top scientists at the end of each year, whenever the Nobel Prize comes up, they very much wait for that phone call. And in fact, most of the time, of course, they are not going to get it. But then they look at who has got the Nobel because these are generally people they know in the field. And then they see what thing got them the Nobel. And again, they get back to their labs and spend the next year doing science and so on. So this is something which often happens in people where 
Nobel Prize is an important prize and in the remaining fields it's also there to some extent but not to the extent it is there in the fields which have a Nobel Prize and so on. So what are the things you can do to improve your chances in getting prizes and becoming a successful researcher? So I would say of course the number one thing is start your research out as soon as possible. So if you publish a lot of papers in your 20s and 30s then it's much more likely that you are going to get a lot of citations in your 40s, 50s and 60s. And the next thing is that if you are somewhat delayed in terms of publication, try to publish a large number of papers as soon as you finish your PhD or during your PhD. So essentially, if you are doing postdocs, try to publish more papers during this time. And also if you are a research scientist or an assistant professor, try to publish as many papers during this time. Now, why publishing more papers helps is because you do not a priori know which of your papers is going to become a big hit as far as citations are concerned. It's very difficult to really predict this. In fact, you will find that the papers which you think are your greatest papers will not get cited much and the papers you think are very normal papers often get cited a lot more. So these are things which happen and if you have been a researcher for a long time, you will clearly see that you as a person are not a great judge of the content you produce. So this is similar to making YouTube videos. You may make a lot of YouTube videos and you will find that you do not know which YouTube video is going to be a success as far as views and likes are concerned because these things are being determined by the social market or the social system out there and so just like YouTube, the journal publication system is also a social process. And so what people like, what people cite is very difficult to predict. Therefore, what you should try to do is work in several different fields in the first 10 to 20 years of your research career and try to publish a large number of papers in good journals. And what you will find that a small number of these papers will take off. So again, this is very clear in many cases, in many professions, for example, in venture capital, that people buy or fund a lot of startups and just a few of them take off and they make all the money. So similarly, if you are somebody who has published 50 journal papers, you'll find that 10 of these papers are going to get cited a large number of times. So this is the well-known Pareto principle that 20% of your work essentially gives you most of the benefit and in fact science it is even more skewed it may be that 10% of your work may be most of your citation so that's something to keep in mind now what are the things you can do when you are more old I would say of course the one thing I mentioned is that you continue doing science as long as possible and again you try to live as long as possible and this is not something very funny actually it is true that as far as scientists are concerned, the scientists who have lived on to their 80s and 90s are much more likely to get the Nobel Prize because they are still there and the prize is not being given posthumously in most of the cases, for example, in the typical disciplines like chemistry, physics and so on. So that's something to keep in mind. So you need to take good care of your health. That certainly is going to be very important fact that if you take good care of your health then you can live as long as you possibly can and therefore you can mitigate to some extent the delayed start if you start it later in life. So there are many people who essentially start out later in life and they are delayed bloomers and so what they can do is they can take care of their health, always go to the gym, eat a good healthy diet which is containing a lot of fruits and vegetables and try to stay away from meat products as far as possible. So this is certainly going to help you to live a longer life and be more productive and therefore you are going to counter the Matthew effect to some extent because one of the fallacies in the Matthew's effect is that he does not account for mortality. So again it is true that those who have much shall receive more but also the fact remains that different people have different times which they can spend on the planet and therefore if you are somebody who can improve his or her health condition and live for a longer time 
then you have a chance to defeat Matthew in this thinking. So this was my take today about why you should publish when young and what can you do if you are not so young and how you can catch up with those who have started in their youth as far as PhD and publications are concerned. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.